Section 12.4 continued. Angle measures and segment lengths using secants. Theorem 12.12. .12. If two chords or secants intersect inside the circle, then the product of the segment of one chord equals the product of the segments of the second chord. In this circle, I have two chords that intersect at a point. The first chord is broken into two segments, length of A and B, and the second chord is broken into two segments with length C and D. Theorem 12.12 states, when these two chords or secants intersect inside the circle, the length of the first chord, the two segments A times B, equals the lengths of the segments of the second chord, C times D. Let's look at an example. Here, they want me to find the value of X. I'm given a circle, and I have two chords that intersect at a point inside the circle. From theorem 12.12, I know the product of the segment lengths of each chord are equal. So I have 12 times 8 equals 16 times X. And when I simplify, 12 times 8 is equal to 96 equals 16x. Divide both sides by 16, I get x equal to 6. Let's look at an example. Here they want me to find the value of x. In the diagram, I have two secants that intersect a point outside the circle. From theorem 12.12, I know that I can create an equation in such a way that 10 times the sum of the segment lengths of the first secant, x plus 10, is equal to 12 times the sum of the segment lengths of the second secant. Then I can simplify each side of the expression and solve for x to get the segment length of the first secant. So I distribute 10x plus 100 equals 12 times 32. 10x plus 100 equals 12 times 32 is 384. 10x, subtract 100, I get 284. Divide by 10, x equals 28.4 units. Theorem 1212 continued. If a secant and a tangent intersect at a point outside the circle, in the diagram, I have a secant and a tangent that intersect at a point outside the circle. The secant is divided into two segment lengths, A and B. The tangent is only divided into one segment length, from the point of tangency to the point of intersection of the secant and the tangent, and that generates a segment length of C. In this case, theorem 12.12 tells me that I have a formula that can be C squared equals A times A plus B, or the segment generated by the tangent squared equals the segment generated on the outside of the circle times the sum of the segment lengths of the secant. Let's look at an example. Here, they want me to find the value of x. I have a secant and a tangent that intersect at a point outside the circle. From theorem 12.12, I know that the segment length generated by the tangent is going to be squared, so that's x squared, equals 12 times the sum of the segment lengths generated by the secant. 4 plus 12. When I simplify, I get x squared equals 12 times 16. x squared equals 12 times 16, which is 192. And when I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to get x equal to 13.9 units for the value of x. In this example, they still want me to find the value of x. Here, I'm given two chords that intersect at a point inside the circle, so I'm going to use the first part of theorem 12.12. I have a diameter, which is a special chord that happens to pass through the center of my circle. When that is perpendicular to another chord, I know it bisects the chord and its intercepted arc. Therefore, these two segments are congruent, which means I know that this segment is six units long. Now I can use the theorem 12.12, the first part of it, and generate my formula in such a way that I have 6 times 6 equals 4 times x. That gives me 36 is equal to 4x. When I divide by 4 on both sides, I get x equal to 9 units. In this example, I have a secant and a tangent that intersect at a point outside the circle. From the third part of 12.12, 12, 
I know that the segment generated by the tangent is squared, and that equals the segment length of the secant outside of the circle times the sum of the segments of the secant, which is x plus 30. This gives me, when I simplify, 400 equal to x squared plus 30x. I'm going to set this equal to 0 because I have a quadratic. 0 equals x squared plus 30x minus 400. Now I need to factor this quadratic. 0 equals x squared breaks up into x and x. And 400 will break into 40 and 10. 40 times 10 is 400. This minus sign tells me I need to subtract my two inner terms. And I need my term for the middle to be positive. Therefore, this is going to be plus minus. And we can FOIL to verify that this is correct. x times x is x squared. 40x minus 10x is 30x. And a positive 40 times a negative 10 is a negative 400. Solving each product, I'm going to get x equal to a negative 40 and x equal to 10. We know that I cannot generate a negative length inside of a diagram. Therefore, I know this is not true. And our solution is x equal to 10 units. On this example, they want me to find the value of x and y. Here I have two circles. I have a tangent line to the point of tangency between the two circles and also two secants. I know that the tangent and the secants generate a relationship by using theorem 1212 part 3. If I use this tangent and this secant, I'm going to have two values in the equation that are unknown. But if I use this tangent and this secant, I can find the value of x. And once I find the value of x, I can then determine the value of y. So let's initiate our problem on the right side of the diagram using the tangent related to this secant. Therefore, I know from the first part, I have x squared equals 10 times 10 plus 6. When I simplify, I get x squared equals 10 times 16 x squared equals 1 6. And when I take the square root of both sides, I get x equal to 12.6. Now I can use the value of x to determine the value of y and when the relationship between this tangent and this secant. When that occurs, I'm going to get 12.6 squared equals 8 times 8 plus y. That gives me, and we know that x squared is 160. 160 equals 8 times 8, 64, and 8y when I distribute. I subtract 64 on both sides. I'm going to get 90. 6 is equal to 8y. And when I divide by 8 on both sides, I'm going to get y equal to 12. 